fire, fire, fire. Fall afresh in this place. Fall afresh, oh God, on each individual, each family. And then, God, allow the fire to fill this temple so much so that each person that's under the sound of my voice will say, what must we do to be saved? God, you said I cannot preach unless the preacher comes. So I suspend right now who I think I am and ask that the Holy Ghost, the preacher of all preachers, come in this place. And I will sit down so that that which is in me, you, the I am, the reason for my movement and my breathing and my being, the I am will stand in the name of Jesus and the redeemed of the Lord said amen. Amen, amen. 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 Oh my God, it's like fire. Dr. Tamer, I know now for real what fire feels like. Man, I thought I knew, but I sure enough know. I declare, this is Palm Sunday, y'all. This is a reason to feel the fire, amen. If you don't feel it any other time, this is a reason that you need to feel the fire, amen. And for those of you who don't know, that's been my prayer, that the fire would fall, not just on the congregation. How many of you know if the fire don't hit the preacher first, every sermon I preach got to start with me. So I can't tell y'all to repent, and I haven't. I can't tell you to go on a fast, and I won't. Huh? I, everything I preach, I, just, I have to live it. Am I right about it? Amen, amen. If you have your Bibles, please turn to Matthew. If not, uh, we have it in our printed bulletins this morning. If Matthew, the 21st chapter, verses 1 through 11, please stand in reverence of the Lord. And we're going to start in verse number four. Number four. We're going to read four, five, six, and the first part of seven. Amen. And it says, all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass, and a coat, the foal of an ass. And the disciples went, did as Jesus commanded them, seven says, and brought the ass and the coat, and put them their clothes, and they set him there on. They set him there on. They set him there on. The word of God for the people of God. You may take your seats. <clears throat> this is Passover. And it was the time of remembering and celebrating God's power, God's faithfulness, God's bringing the Israelites out of Egypt, out of slavery. The time when everyone who possibly could made their way, somewhat like today, to the temple for the celebration. The time when a lamb would be sacrificed, unleavened bread baked, song sung in praise of God who rescued the people. And on the way to the holy city, the crowds would sing, recite psalms, and tell stories. On the way to the holy city, people would begin to cut down branches and, and trade recipes, kind of like we're doing today and next week. On the way to the holy city, the people 
would be coming, coming together in the name of the Lord. And they would celebrate together and shouting and dancing and praising. Shouting and dancing and praising. They would say, Hosanna! Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, the word itself means save now. The one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, save us. Because you're the one who's coming in the name of the Lord. Just for a moment, I want to talk briefly about save us now. When we look at what's going on around us, when we see the disparities that's going on in our communities and in our homes, when we look at the religious sector and we see that popes are having to resign and give an immunity, when we look at the fact that preachers who were once strong and, and fervent and prayerful for the Lord are now deciding that the, the ministry is not what they decided they wanted to do, not what God wanted them to do, but what they did not want to do. When we look at the news, we see more and more and more African-American children going to jail. We see children at the age of eight having to stay at home by themselves. We see mothers having to work two and three jobs just to make ends meet. We see fathers who desperately want to make a difference in the lives of their families, but because of a past mistake, they have no jobs. And so you find them, watch them daily, standing on the corner as they lose their pride, as they lose their dignity, just saying, can you give me a dollar, please? I ran out of gas. Can you help? A oh, brother, I, I really want to do better. I, I saw a sign that said, food, please. I'll work just for food. It is in the season of, of, of this time in our lives where we find that we have more and more and more African-American males in jail than we have on a job. It is in this season in our lives that we're finding more and more and more young girls at the age of 13 who are sexually active than staying in school. We see more and more and more seniors, senior citizens who don't get enough income to stay coming so they give up and they decide that they don't need to be a part of anybody's church because that was the church that their mothers once built and it was the church of refuge. It was the church but now when they come to church they don't feel that they're being wanted, respected, or needed. So when, when, when we look, look at where we are now, it is befitting that we would deal with a subject called save us now. Save us, save us, save us. I heard my grandmother say, if the Lord don't do anything for me, if he doesn't come right now, if he doesn't help me out of this situation, if he doesn't hear my prayer in the midnight hour, if he doesn't make a way out of no way, if he doesn't put bread on my table, if he does not do it, it cannot be done. But we are in a season, Rosalind, where we're even called to question our own faith. In a season where it looks like I have more bills than I have money. I have more troubles than I have triumphs. It looks like that it just doesn't seem like that we're going to make it. But I come to tell somebody this morning that when you call on the name of Jesus, it doesn't matter what you're dealing with. It doesn't matter how bad it hurts. It doesn't matter where you're going. All that matters is that when you call on the name of Jesus, the word says he will save you when? He will save you now. He will save you this moment. He will save you today. He will save. Oh, I'm so glad that I know he'll save me. He'll save me when I'm up. He'll save me when I'm down. He'll save me when I'm sick. He'll save me when I'm strong. I'm so glad that I know a God who will come immediately to my rescue. Say yeah. He's coming, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming, he's he's coming, he's he's coming. I don't know if you see him, but he's coming. In fact, he's already here. Can you see him? He's already made a way here. He's already put food on your table. He's already brought an increase. Can you see him? Do you know him? Will he make a way? Say yeah. He was he was a Brother Hall, he was a popular rabbi. He was popular and, 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 
the very people who were saying, Hosanna, 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 had seen this man work miracles. He had seen this man who could give sight to the blind. He, they had seen this man who caused the deaf to hear and the sick to be well. You were, you, they had seen this man take two fish and five loaves of bread and feed thousands upon thousands. They had seen this man as Reverend Najuma said on Friday, she saw not, not, not addition, not one plus one equals two, but they had seen Jesus who could take one, and as she said, skip from one to three to ten to fifteen to twenty, they had seen a man who could do all things, he could raise the dead, he went to Lazarus. Called Lazarus forth uh, and said, Lazarus, uh, rise. And you would have thought that because of what they saw, that their faith would have been so stellar and so strong that there was no way for the adversary to slip in. But every now and then, circumstances can cause you to be so fearful that you forget what he has done. But I got news for you. The Bible says that when he spoke to Joshua, he said, Joshua, I'm getting ready to take you to the promised land, and I want you to cross over Jordan. He said, but before you cross, I want you to do one thing. I want you to build an altar by putting 12 stones right here. 12 stones right here in Walker Temple. 12 stones of how he made a way. 12 stones of how he brought you up. 12 stones of how he healed cancer. 12 stones of how he brought deliverance. 12 stones of addictions being gone. 12 stones of gospel ministry. 12 stones of living word. 12 stones. Because if you can remember what I've done for you yesterday, then when the storms of life come, uh, you won't be so easily swayed uh, on what people say uh, or what people do uh, when you look back uh, over the things uh, that he's already brought you through. Uh, and it looks like uh, the turbulence is coming in uh, and the clouds are hanging low. Uh, you can holler with a resounding voice, uh, save uh, me! Now, when it looks like uh, your children are not doing what they're supposed to do, uh, go in their room uh, when they're at school uh, and say, save uh, them now. Uh, when you guys don't have money, uh, walk to the bank, uh, go inside the bank uh, and say, save uh, me now. Uh, when you're having mental challenges. And it looks like your mind can't be regulated. And the demons are tormenting you at night. All you have to say is, save me now. All you have to say is, come, come now. Hosanna in the highest. And they began to whisper. And, and Dr. Tamer, one thing about it is, I, my grandmama used to say, you'll know the company you keep, you'll know the person that you're with by the company you keep. And we would have thought that because Terry, they had already seen all of this stuff. Uh, they had already witnessed all the miracles. Uh, they had seen Jesus at his highest peak. Huh? That you would have thought that they wouldn't have been afraid of anybody. But they would have taken the authority.
Jesus, uh, if you ask uh, in the midnight hour, uh, you said uh, we may endure for a night, uh, but I'm going to hang in there uh, because I believe uh, that we're going to be saved. Uh, but it's something. That's one kind of fight. But when you're a savior, the one who's responsible for you coming to church is in a quandary and in a trial and in a trial in a trial and in tribulation. What do you say of these things? So they shifted. They thought they were serving the Trinity. Huh. But Asia, they shifted. They became fair weather Christians. <laughs> They, they, they began to say, uh, I don't know him. I don't know who he is. Uh, he's never done anything for me. Uh, I, 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 I don't know him. Uh, oh, you got the wrong one. Uh, and as Christians, uh, all too often we say, I don't know him. Uh, I, you got the wrong one. Uh, he didn't do it for me. Uh, he did it for somebody else. Uh, I'm just, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, that must have been my twin. Because uh, it sure enough wasn't me uh, in the crowd. So they start hollering, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. The crucifixion was one of the worst deaths that a person could experience. It was a form of execution. And what they would do is they would humiliate you in the public. Because anybody hanging from a tree, <laughs> you know there's blood on the trees, huh? And so they would hu humiliate you and, and put you publicly in front of those people whom you have been found guilty with. And they would put a sign on your, on your cross that says, whatever the crime is, that's what you're guilty of. Well, they said to Jesus, crucify him. Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said, what's wrong with the man? What did he do? Because when I inspected his character, I found that he wasn't a liar. <laughs> I found that he wasn't a cheater. <laughs> I found that he didn't commit adultery. <laughs> I found that he wasn't uh, running the streets. <laughs> I found that he took care of the children. <laughs> I found that he took care of widows. <laughs> I found that he'll put bread on your table. <laughs> I found that he'll argue your case. <laughs> what did the man do <laughs> that would cause you <laughs> to say crucify him? <laughs> crucify him. <laughs> Even Pilate <laughs> said to us, uh, and is saying to us right now, uh, I didn't see anything wrong uh, with what you said you were supposed to be doing. Uh, he just did for us uh, everything that we said we were supposed to do. Uh, and instead of you embracing, uh, you say crucify. They didn't just beat him, Daisy. The Bible says that they beat him so merciful mercilessly that they took they first whipped him bam 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 but that was not good enough they took a, a leather strap and they put some balls some metal balls on the bottom of them and then they had a, a nail thing running through it and every time it would hit his back it would snatch out his skin. <laughs> Every time it hit him, it would snatch and, and go through his muscles. <laughs> it would go through his blood veins. <laughs> it would go through his arteries. <laughs> what <laughs> did he do? <laughs> the Bible says <laughs> that it wasn't good enough <laughs> that they would just charge a man <laughs> for something that he did not do. <laughs> but they beat him to a pulp. Uh, they beat him to the place uh, that his mama didn't recognize him uh, and his friends denounced him. Uh, there's no way, uh, Terry, I'm a mama uh, and I can't tell you right now uh, what that would do to me uh, if I saw my baby uh, and I didn't recognize my child, uh, a child that I fed, uh, a child I prayed for, uh, a child I carried, uh, 
a child I just provided for. I don't know what I would do if I saw them doing what they were doing. I don't know if I would have been able to take it. But they said that when they brought Jesus before the officials, he never said a mumbling word. In fact, when they questioned him, he said, that's your interpretation of who you think I am. But I am, you don't even understand the kingdom in which I come from. So guess what? Barry, when people don't understand where you come from, there's no need for you to try to explain it. Because some people don't want to know where you came from. They just want to look at you and say, they're nobodies. They can't accomplish anything. They won't go anywhere. But I guarantee you that the moment you start saying that I don't have to say a word. Because my daddy knows who I am. And my daddy promised to take care of me. My father promised to fight on my behalf. Imagine for a second. Imagine Jesus walking. Every step, he was barely making it. But because he knew that his father was going to save him. He refused to throw in the towel. And I just want you to know one thing. That when you get to that place where it looks like you can't make it. I want this church to understand that your daddy is going to come and see about you. I want you to understand that when it looks like the trials are sitting on your brow and the tribulations are embedded in your heart, I just want you to know that they are and they will. You will walk a temple. We are going to be over okay uh, because I said daddy uh, save us uh, save us now uh, save us uh, save us God uh, from the enemy uh, hide us uh, underneath the wing uh, of the almighty uh, so that uh, so uh, the enemy can't locate us uh, hide us uh, give us uh, precise vision uh, give us uh, Revelatory insight uh, so that uh, when I stand uh, and I ask uh, what uh, must uh, we do, uh, how I heard uh, Jesus say, I said, Why? Why, table? Why? Why are we people of little faith? Why? When all we have to do is say, Daddy, save us! Save us! I said, why? Why? Why would Jesus do what he said? Why would he do what he said? He said, I'm doing it for love. I'm doing it for peace. I'm doing it uh, for patience. Uh, I'm doing it uh, for you. Uh, why? Uh, what he do? Uh, what he's doing? Uh, he said, uh, I do it because uh, I want to save uh, your soul. Uh, I'm doing it for the afflicted. Uh, I'm doing it uh, for the saint. Uh, I'm doing it uh, for the sick. Uh, Oh, oh, I'm 
doing it for salvation. I'm doing it. I'm doing it for the homeless. I'm doing it for you. Did he do it? He doing it. He did it way back 2,000 years. He did it for your grandmama. He did it for your great grandmama. Oh, oh, he doing it. He did it for the seniors. He did it. Oh, oh, oh. He had to give him praise because he's the Messiah. He's the Messiah. He is the Messiah. Why are you praising him? He did it for me, a sinner. He did it for him, a sinner. And why you pray? I praise him because he loves me. Because he loves me. And I want you to know that I did it. I'm doing it because he recognized and he gave me authority. He crowned me with glory and said, if you obey my law, why are you doing it crazy? Why are you doing it? Why are you doing it Tamer? Why are you doing it Wellington? Why are you doing it Omari? Why are you doing it Gail? Why are you doing it? Why you doing? What you doing? It ain't about uh, who called my name. Uh, I love the bishop, uh, but if he don't call my name, uh, I ain't gonna be messed up. Uh, I'm gonna come on up in here. The glory. The glory is in the house. Y'all, the glory is here. All you got to say is, Lord, save me now. When it gets hard this week, what you going to say? What you going to say when it gets hard? Who you gonna ask her? Cause remember, you can't just be saying save me. You got to remember who you serving. You got to remember that he said call me by my name. And if you call me by my name, I'm gonna answer. If you call me in the midnight, remember I never sleep and I never slumber. Call me. Oh. Call me. Call me when you're praising for the physical challenge. For the physical bed. Praise him for the children. Praise him for the widows. Praise him. in here that's gonna praise him I don't need nobody to pump me up come on and dance 
to it. Do it till you feel it in your soul. Think about what it did for you. Now give me some marching music. Because this soldier needs to be set loose. 